Joining us right now is someone that's been one of the public faces of the protest against the abuse of Dr. Robert Anderson at the University of Michigan, as well as the university's handling of, uh, of the abuse case and the scandal that's currently uh, under litigation. Uh, and we're joined by John Vaughn, who is also a former star running back over at the University of Michigan with us on the Megacast. John, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I uh, appreciate having you on. Thank you very much. So um, you are one of the many, many people that uh, unfortunately uh, fell victim to the abuse of Dr. Robert Anderson during his th uh, time being affiliated with the University of Michigan's athletics. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your story about uh, how you came in contact with Dr. Anderson and then also um, your story about coming forward uh, with your story and trying to help other people that have also been abused uh, by this doctor who was empowered by the university? Oh, wow. So, um, I was recruited um, um, for the 1988 class um, to come into the university. Uh, Les Miles recruited me, and um, so my first experience with Dr. Anderson was uh, the team physical, in which you know he went through uh, medical history. My mother had contract con contracted breast cancer uh, my senior year in high school and so that was one of the things in the medical history that he noted um, did the general uh, exams uh, tests you know height weight blood pressure uh, pulse and all those things and then uh, he proceeded to tell me that I needed to do a testicular cancer screening exam and a prostate cancer screening exam in that first uh, first physical to be eligible to play. Um, and the thing about that is, um, you know, at 18, I didn't even know what a prostate was. Um, and being that my mother was uh, um, still recovering from a complete mastectomy and lymph nodes removed, I was terrified of cancer. So when I heard the word cancer, I just knew that one, I didn't want it, and two, whatever I needed to do to, you know, to make sure that I didn't have cancer in that exam, I was, you know, willing to do. And, um, you know, because all of the exams that I experienced throughout my time at Michigan, everything was purportedly to be done under the guise of medical treatment. So you're entrusting in the medical staff at the University of Michigan, you're entrusting in Dr. Anderson because uh, he, he's the doctor that is assigned to you by the university so that you're able to go through all the necessary testing that you're supposed to be going through in order to gain that eligibility to play. And in, in doing so, and, and trying to take the precautions that you were trying to take, knowing your, your family history, particularly with your mother's history uh, with breast cancer, uh, when did it click for you that what Dr. Anderson was doing during his during what you were under the impression were routine exams was abusive? Oh wow! So one of my teammates and best friends sent me an um, email March 26th of 2020, um, literally two weeks to the day of my 50th birthday, and. Um, in that email, he talked about um, the Detroit, I think it was the Detroit Free Press or the Detroit News article that Kim Keselowski came out with documenting um, the abuse that Anderson was um, and the medical treatment and then the letter that Tad DeLuca had sent. So um, we're about 18, you know, 20 months 21 months since a little bit less than 21 months of when I actually found out that all of those exams were feeding his addiction and perverse um, attraction, uh, I guess, to um, mainly male uh, teenage athletes. We're joined by John Vaughn, former university. So, oh, please continue. Sorry, John. No, I was saying, so, you know, 
up until that point, I hadn't thought about my day-to-day life at the University of Michigan in 30 years. And, you know, once I got that email, it just really, you know, shook the core of, you know, going back and reliving and thinking about those experiences. What unfortunately happens um, so often with people that are abused uh, physically, sexually, uh, in any form or or in multiple forms, especially by someone that is doing this on a serial level, such as Dr. Robert Anderson did in his time at the University of Michigan, is that people that understand that this is abusive may be apprehensive to come forth with it. They may have some embarrassment uh, about it that, that leads them to to keep it secret, or it's just simply their process of going through experiencing such a trauma, and it's not until others come forward that they that they themselves then come forward and recognize recognize publicly at least uh, the abuse and the trauma that they experience at the hands of somebody in power. And in this case, that is exactly what has happened. Uh, with the uh, Dr. Anderson scandal over there at the University of Michigan, and, and protests have been ongoing uh, for for months since that news broke. Uh, your protest at U of M over the handling of this scandal uh, has included more than two months of camping out in front of President Mark Schlissel's on-campus home, demanding an in-person conversation. Uh, at this point in time, has any in-person or other communication directly with the president of the University, Mark Schlissel, has that happened? for you or any other victims? It hasn't happened uh, to me or any other victims to my knowledge, but definitely not since we've been out here. No direct communication. I mean, the the only people that the university sends to speak to me um, pretty regularly is the, uh, he's a sergeant in the campus police department. And so so, uh, from your perspective, what is, what are your thoughts on the manner in which the university has addressed this scandal, has addressed the horrifying abuse that Dr. Anderson that Dr. Anderson committed against so many athletes at the University of Michigan? Do you believe that they have been handling this properly? No, not at all. Uh, when you look at even the uh, Board of Regents meeting yesterday or last week where Chuck Christian had to beg um, as a dying man, as he says, I just need five minutes to speak. You guys will not let me speak. And then to have the passionate, you know, you know, plea and speech that he gave and to have zero response just shows me how, uh, disrespectful, inhumane, and more than anything is lack of empathy and compassion that not only the Office of the President, but the Board of Regents has shown us throughout this entire ordeal. We're joined by... And the thing that, you know, is so odd about that is supposedly Ron Weiser, who's on the Board of Regents, came out, excuse me, in March 12th of 2020, saying that he was a victim. And I can't understand how if you have a supposed victim as one of your own in the Board of Regents, why there isn't a level of understanding, compassion, and empathy that you, you know you guys are showing. So I think it's just a catastrophic failure in how they've handled it thus far. We're joined by John Vaughn, former star U of M running back uh, and uh, one of the many survivors of the abuse of Dr. Robert Anderson, joining us today on the Megacast. Um, of course, the, with the, the way the university has been handling the scandal, um, with the way the university has been communicating or lack of communicating properly with the victims of Dr. Anderson's abuse, and then on top of that, the success of the of, of Michigan athletics, particularly uh, their football team. F- for you, having that pride of being a, a Michigan football alum, of being an alum of any team at the college level that uh, comes with so much pride and so much camaraderie uh, from being part of that program, with their success this year, and, the, and, and then on top of that, more importantly, the way that the university supports its athletics teams, but then it has not been very supportive 
of those alum athletes. Has it made it tough for you or for other victims to enjoy the success that your team has been having this year because of the way that the university has, for lack of better terms, swept your stories under the rug? Um, for me, it, it hasn't been difficult. Um, and I say that because these young men had nothing to do. It's not their fault that we're mired in this sexual abuse and cover up of the last half century. And, you know, my class, we never lost to Ohio State. And so I was so happy for these kids to know what it's like to win that game. Uh, or these young men to, to win that game. Um, it does not, uh, if there's this duality in the compartmentalization that we do as athletes in general, but I can separate the, the victories that these young men have had in success with uh, the perpetrators that are still, or the enablers and the people who empower Dr. Anderson are still employed at the university and my relationships with ex-teammates like Ward Manuel and, and you know, you know and a, a, a fellow Michigan man and Jim Harbaugh, I can separate those two. Uh, and I think that the university um, has uh, tried to keep us faceless, nameless, and voiceless uh, as John Doe's, which is why I have constantly been saying I am not a John Doe. My name is John Vaughn and because I will not and we will not allow them to continue to sweep this under the rug because if it is if all the truth is not exposed then you're going to have another 50 years, half a decade, half a century of cover-ups. It will just continue to self uh, perpetuate this uh, culture of abuse. Um, so it's 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 bittersweet, but yet I don't hold anything against these young men, and I know what it takes to, you know, and the joy of, of beating your rivals. So very very happy for them. We're joined by John Vaughn, former University of Michigan star running back, and he's also a survivor of the abuse of Dr. Robert Anderson uh, during his time at the University of Michigan. And um, so uh, at at this moment in time, lawsuits are still still ongoing against the University of Michigan. Where does yours and and other victims' lawsuits together against the uh, university, where in the process are are those and where do those lawsuits stand at this time? Right now, they're in uh, mediation, um, court-guided mediation, and um, uh, I see that being ongoing for the you know foreseeable next couple of months. Um, I don't think we're remotely close to a resolution, and um, we're not remotely close to having serious in-person open back and forth dialogue with the border regions uh in any any way um they have continued to play games uh hiding in a lot of ways behind supposed lawyers saying that we can't talk which is ludicrous that hasn't happened um but doing anything that they possibly can to not sit in a forum across the table with victims and beginning a dialogue of not only restitution, but healing and closure. Um, So, you know, the mediation is ongoing, uh, but the conversations, the real conversations haven't even begun. And there's a difference between responding properly to a scandal, to a tragedy, to acts of violence against uh, against people, and and, uh, and simply just responding respectfully. At the very least, you would hope for a respectful response, uh, and a respectful response should be part, should be a key part of a proper response to any situation like uh, like what has been ongoing 
at the University of Michigan. John, just another minute with you before we'll say goodbye today. Anything else at this time that you'd like to say that we haven't discussed today? No, um, we just thank you for the opportunity to, to continue to share our truths and to keep this subject out in the public and uh, the media, right, and journalistic sphere because uh, the more, as one of my fellow friends and victims says, is, you know, sunlight is the best antiseptic. We have to continue to bring in this story to, to the light. And John, yeah, well, John, we appreciate your time. Appreciate you uh, giving us the space to discuss this very tough topic with you and, and uh, for giving us some insight from the victims of these horrible acts against so many at the University of Michigan. Thank you.